So we know by now that a big goal of object-oriented programming is to be able to reuse components and to be able to use components in unanticipated ways. Well, so far, all of our code has been in this index.php file, which has made it easy to see the changes that we've been making over time, and that's been really valuable. But now is a good time to start thinking about how we're going to organize our code into separate files. What makes sense? Well, the general protocol with object-oriented programming is that each class should go into its own file. And we're going to go ahead and go that route. What this means is that we're going to be including files and in other files as needed. So we'll talk through exactly what those changes are. Jump to your resource pack directory. And what we're going to do is expand the 11th step here, which is called breaking up our code into different files. And we have an index.php file and then a lib folder that includes files for each of the different classes that we currently have in our index.php file. We've actually got quite a few at this point. So we're going to copy all of these, the index and the lib folder, and paste them over in our examples OOP folder. Again, this is in our Drupal core directory. We've created an examples folder and an OOP folder inside of that for object-oriented programming. Make sure to replace the index.php file that's there right now. Now just to verify that this is working, let's go to our browser and go to our index.php file. Looks good. Let's go back to our folder here. So in our index.php file, let's open that up. Our code has been simplified greatly. So all of our classes are gone. We start by creating the builder object here. We have our contact form array. I'm gonna scroll down our footer content array our rendering of the footer, our page elements array, and then our call to the contact us page controller function. At the very top, we're using the require once statement to include our builder class and our contact us controller class. Just in case any of this looks a little unfamiliar to you, the dir constant here points to the current directory of the file that's being accessed. So this makes our code a bit more portable because we can have this index.php file anywhere as long as the lib folder comes along with it. So the idea with lib is that it's short for library and using the lib folder has become an established convention for where to put your PHP code. This is in contrast to CSS or JavaScript code. You've already seen this convention used in our glue module that we created early on in the series. And so we're continuing with this convention. Now the reason we don't need to include all of the different classes is because these classes will include whatever classes they need. So in this file, we only use the builder class. And then if we scroll down, we use the contact us controller class. If we open up the builder class, I'm gonna go back to the file browser and open up builder.php. You see that we include the form class. That's because within the builder class, we use the form class here. And then if we open up our form class file, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the file browser and open it. We include the validator class because that's used in our validate method down here. If we open up our contact us controller file, you'll see that we include the default page and the printed page classes here because we use those inside of our code. Now something to note is that we're either going to use printed page or default page, but we don't know which one we're going to use, so we have to add them both. Now, a couple of steps into these videos, and we're going to see a way that we don't have to include class files that we're not going to use, which is pretty cool. So finally, if we open up default page or printed page, we'll just go ahead and open up default page, you'll see that this requires the page class. Notice that inside of these class files, we don't have to put the lib folder because we're already in the lib folder. So we're just pointing to the directory that the class is in and then the name of the other class that it's going to include. If you had gone through this process manually, you probably would have run into some issues where you were trying to figure out which classes actually need which other classes in order to function. And that's a legitimate problem that can be solved with something called auto-loading, which we're working up to right now. But at this point, we've broken down our files into a way that's rational. 